Hey YouTube listeners and watchers, this is Chris here. I uh, decided to take a trip down memory lane here. I, uh, I am a uh, computer programmer by, by trade, it's what I do for a living. In uh, many, many, many years ago, even before I went to school and college, I, I, I taught myself how microprocessors worked, and I taught myself on this device right here. This was an Elenco XK300 microprocessor trainer, and I took it out of storage, and the mice seemed to have taken liking to laying on it and stuff, so I cleaned it up real good, at least the circuit board, and, and uh, it still works. It booted. And uh, I mean, I spent hours and hours sitting on my bed keying in programs and learning how microprocessors work. This trainer used an old, antiquated, I don't know, this is probably early 70s processor. It was a 6802 by Motorola, an 8 by an 8 bit computer. And then here's the manual, this is the pages of yellow. And you didn't have tools, you know, you didn't have a cross compiler that you would build your program on a PC and then download it to it. You would have to, what I would do is I'd write my programs out, and you, you wrote your programs out in uh, mnemonics from the actual instruction set of the computer. So you had to even have hand calculate your offsets for your jumps and stuff. So then what you would do is you'd key all your, you'd key each each memory location you'd key in the opcode in hex and so you'd single step through the memory locations and then you would execute the program well right now I've got a little program in here that makes a couple calls to the monitor there's a not there's a monitor EEPROM on here that provides various subroutines that the user can call like display stuff on the seven segment displays or output to the 6821 PIO, which is a parallel interface. A long time ago, I used to have a little LCD display on here, or LEDs, and I can make the LEDs go back and forth. And you know, you learned how uh, the microprocessor worked by, I mean, down at the machine code level, you because you had to key in the mnemonic. You actually had to key in the hex value for the opcode, which was very tedious for really long programs, but it was really cool. This this trainer provided for. I had an old Panasonic tape recorder that you could plug a tape recorder into it, and you could punch your program out onto tape. Now, for for those of you that remember, like, you know, the sounds the mo the old modems used to make, like AOL. You know, when the modem connected, it was that kind of a sound you would hear because it would encode. It would encode the ones and zeros as a series of tones on a tape. It was very slow and very error prone because any noise would just any one bit corrupted your program wouldn't run. But anyway, here's the, they give you a little example in the book here, so then you can uh, you can examine. The, I always remembered 86 was load A, you know, and then you could single step through the program here. But the thing has been kind of glitchy because this keyboard is not behaving today. So then if you hit go, actually it's not gonna it's not flying today. Hang on here. One of the keys is sticking. I washed it up real good and maybe there's still a little bit of moisture inside. So you hit zero and then go. Yeah, the program would put up the word use D5, which was the name of the uh, monitor program that was embedded in the EEPROM. And what you could do is, you know, you have to go zero and then you go memory examine and you would you would have to key in each opcode for each memory location. So there's 3E and then if I remember B7 is like a store A, E4 1D would be a memory location and then 80, another load A with, op, with value 6D which was an ASCII S. I think I don't recall, and then B7, and then etc. So you could then you would use single step through the program to make sure that all of the 
op codes you keyed in were correct, then you'd hit reset, then you hit zero, and then you'd go go execute. Well, it works, which is pretty cool to me. Now, there's like programs like you. I used to key in. I said, you know, like I made a little program here, and I wrote it all out. You know, and you have to key in this all by hand every time. If you made one mistake, you had to go back and redo it all. Not all. You have to go back and find out what location you fucked up. If you missed a location, then you start all over again. But once you got your program running, you could punch. You could punch it to tape by hooking up, and it, and then it would. You, he'd start record and then it would have a header, it would, a series of tones that would, you know, would be construed as a header and then it would write all the bytes out to tape. And then when you wanted to load it, you plugged the microphone back in and then the output of it, so you'd set this thing up to where you wanted it to load the program and then hit playback. And it would sound like, you know, the old modems do. And then you'd load the program back in, you'd hit reset, and then zero and go, where you'd have to start. This was, this is, this is back in the 70s. Wow, this is really bringing back memories for me in how I learned how to uh, interface various sensors and LEDs to input-output. Uh, this trainer had a, a 68, like I said, a 6821 peripheral parallel I.O. controller. It had three, I believe it had three 8-bit ports. You know, you could set up various, like one, like port C could be in eight, eight bits of input. So you could hook switches to it. And then you could have port B as outputs, which you could like hook LEDs to it or things like that. I even had an A to D converter interface where it where it would measure voltages and put them on an L. I had an LCD display, like a two line, two, two line, two by 16 character display, and I could put like voltage equals and, and stuff. So I could digitize a voltage or like the output of a sensor and things like that. But anyway, I thought I'd share. This is like, this is like in the museum here, my own personal museum of stuff. In, uh, I washed the board real good because it had a lot of rat shit on it. You know, it was in here in the garage and the mice were crawling all over it. But it still works and I'm, I'm kind of excited about exploring my roots here. Uh, one of the reasons why I, my, my son's in computer science at Purdue University and, you know, and I chat with him every once in a while on some of the stuff he does. And I learned back on the Motorola architecture, you know. The 6802, the 6800, and then they had the 6805, and then, then they went to 6809, and then they went to the, the, the venerable 68000, which was a lot of computers were built around the 68000. The S100 bus, a lot of cards were built. That's when the, the uh, computer explosion in the mid-70s happened. My son, he's going to Purdue in, in, in computer science, and they're, they're actually doing this kind of thing, assembler on, the, on, the, uh, on an ARM processor, like the Raspberry Pi. They're writing assembly like I'm doing here, but they're doing it on a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty cool. Well, anyway, there's my little trip down memory lane. Thanks for watching.